the abscondo podcast hello and welcome back to the abscondo podcast i've been referring to this new sort of world order as the post ego era and I'm guessing that to a lot of people, probably that doesn't really make sense why I would say that, why we're bringing ego into this. And it's funny, I've always, um, since I started reading A Course in Miracles several years ago and so forth, um, I've been talking a lot about ego, but I find out that people really don't like those kinds of posts or topics. And I, gee, I wonder why. You know, ego never likes to look at itself because when it does, it sees a lot of problems that it can't avoid or when you look at the ego. And so a lot of people just automatically, you know, oh, here we go, ego. I don't even know what the guy's talking about. The ego doesn't want to know what what I'm talking about, which is why it's very unpopular. Nonetheless, I never shy away from the unpopular. And, um, you know, the reason I I, I bring this up, I think it's it's the most suitable, the most fitting description for what's happening in the world. And I wrote about this today in a post. I, I look at it like, like it's a, a wild party in some mansion, right? The way that we've been living and, and the, you know, previously. Um, you have this party that's just such a good time and it's going on, everybody's intoxicated and it goes on so late and you're trying to make it last and it goes late into the night. In fact, so late that it's morning, that the sun is starting to rise, the birds are starting to sing outside. And, um, you know, you're trying to hang on. How much longer? Hold on, hold on, let's keep going. It's just so much fun. But, it is morning, <laughs> and outside there are other people who have been sleeping all night, who are awake, you know, it's the next day, and we're getting ready for this beautiful new day. And I look at that as kind of a metaphor for, um, you know, living under the ego or living in spirit or, you know, awakened to spiritual consciousness. And so the people who are at the party they might have a couple more swigs of vodka and they might try to hold on for a little bit longer, but at some point it's going to be a very painful letdown or coming down. And that process is going to last as long as it takes until, you know, these people decide to heal. Others of, you know, other people um, who have already spiritually awakened and who already exist from beyond the ego, who have awakened to consciousness already, to spirituality, to true spirituality, you know, we're outside already in this new morning and our lives have already begun in this new era, the post-ego era. So what, what about this, what about the situation would possibly make me bet against the ego? Now, ego has been around for thousands and thousands of years as, you know, as the fundamental, um, guide, <laughs> confused yet yet fundamental guide to, to how the world works. And, you know, it's it's been always there. It's been pervading our, our thinking, our institutions, our religions, our media, our governments, and just the way that we think as individuals, our schools, and the way we're trained to think. And there are a few fundamental foundations that the ego rests upon. And the ego can only exist as long as these foundations seem to be real. One of the foundations, or the very foundation of ego, is the the belief in separation. The, The belief that I am my mind and body, and that I am I am separate from nature. I am separate from God. It's me against the world. Me, me, me. And, and from this flawed assumption, which is absurd on the surface, because of course we all come from um, the same, we all, you know, we're made of the same materials as the universe is made of. We're not separate from anything, although there is this illusion that we are separate. We have the ability to think in our minds privately. We have our own bodies and feel our own bodies in a way that we don't feel other people's bodies. I mean, there is something very real from the senses from the eyes and from your senses that says you are separate. And to some degree, of course, that's true. But if you take this too far and and this belief is unchecked, it leads to a lot of insanity. It leads to a lot of fear, constantly worried thoughts, 
about what's going to happen to you, thoughts about um, your life, my life, you know, holding on to, to what I've achieved in the past, possessions and status and things like this, relationships, whatever it may be. And then, of course, you have this idea of the future that, that even though you maybe aren't enjoying the present moment very much, you're at work, you're going through another routine day, you're exhausted, you're maybe sick, you're looking forward to some, to some um, relief or some thrill in the future, some, some, some boost, such as an awesome trip or something you want to buy or a party you want to go to. And so this, this system went, went along, this thought system, you know, continued on just fine. It was impenetrable. It just could not be undone because um, the world was such that we did, we were able to maintain what seemed to be some degree of structure and permanence um, in terms of our, our, you know, what we, what we have from our past, you know, what we've achieved, and 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 that we're able to enjoy that in the present moment to some extent, and there was a real possibility of doing whatever we wanted to in the future. You could take a trip around the world, you know, you could go to a party, um, you could buy whatever you want to, go to the mall, whatever you wanted to do, go to a show, go to a, go to a game, whatever it may be that the ego wanted to do to look forward to. Um, was was permitted, <laughs> okay? So now we have a situation where the structures of the past, and I, I, I talk about past and future because the past and future are really the foundation, I say foundation, it's fundamental in the working of how the ego thinks, okay? The ego is only concerned with past and future to the extent that it barely even notices the present moment. And when you live in a way that you are in the egoic state, that your mind dominated state, when you live in a way that you are in the egoic state or the mind dominated state of being, what ends up happening is that your mind diverts so much attention and so much thinking to the past and future that the present moment really never is very enjoyable or not anywhere near as enjoyable as it could be. Because the present moment is only enjoyable when we stop thinking about those worries about the future and those concerns about maintaining the past. That's when, that's when you can enjoy yourself, when that stops. But with, if you're living in the egoic state, that almost never stops. And the present moment for a person living this way is not enjoyable. It's even painful. It's even, you know, it's filled with suffering. And the only way this is bearable, this is really interesting, the only way that this state of being is bearable is if the structures of the past seem to be something that you can hold on to within reason, that you think you're going to be able to maintain everything you've achieved and, 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 and keep your, you know, your, your successes real in your life and so forth, and that you're going to be able to find relief in the future to get a break, to go on that trip, to achieve that thing, to, to be admired in that way. So, so these, are, these are hopes. Okay? There's hopes and fears. That's all of the ego. Okay? The problem is that in this current situation, all the things the ego looks forward to are not permitted. You know, and all the things in the past are, are being threatened. The, the economies are starting to, or they will crumble. I mean, economies have to be active or else they're just not there. We're going to have a lot of buildings and a lot of things that exist that just aren't being used properly anymore. And the government's going to maintain the illusion for a little while by printing money um, that everything is going to be okay. And meanwhile, anybody who still lives in this egoic state is waiting for things to go back to how they were, in other words, holding on to the past, or waiting for it to get better in the future, hoping for a better future. Okay? So that's, people who are talking about this situation that way are people that are trying to hold on to ego, but the obvious problem with this is that we are letting go of the past. You know, we had it, we had that ego stuff kind of working, in a way that we had the jobs, we had the companies working and functioning and doing things. We had the entertainment going and all that stuff that we missed from the past. And we also allowed ourselves the freedom to do whatever the hell we wanted to in the future if it meant traveling around the world whenever we felt like it. And so the ego had had what it needed to kind of keep going. But now it doesn't 
have that. And I don't know whether other people, I don't know whether people are seeing this yet. I'm guessing probably for the most part not. But I, you know, I was thinking the other day, are people going through a lot of pain and suffering because of the ego right now? And I don't know that, that they are. Because the way the ego works is that when you have these, these boosts of pride or these, you know, ego gratification, you go to a party or whatever, maybe you go on a trip and you have these ups, what always happens within the ego is that you have a down that's slightly greater than the up. And that's the way the ego always has worked. And so I'm thinking like, well, if you if you remove the ups, you know, we're not getting the, the ego um, gratification anymore. You know, are we just left with 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 these valleys and these dark valleys? I don't think so, because I think what we have is, is pretty calm waters right now. I think because people aren't aren't going so far up, they're not coming so far down. And so what's happening is the ego is just kind of subsiding. It's just kind of releasing its grip on us, on people. I think I could be wrong, but part of what the ego always does and Eckhart Tolle talks about this a lot in his books and his, his speeches. He talks about the pain body. And really, that, sh- that just means getting mad. That's all it really means. And the ego, if you ever wonder why somebody who claims to love you likes to attack you and likes to argue with you and shame you and start these fights, you know, it feels like they're out of control. And, then they, and you're sucked into that same sort of fight. Then you're out of control. And you're both out of control when you're saying things you don't mean. That's ego. That's being possessed by this entity called the ego. And it needs to it needs to do that every once in a while. It could be every few days, it could be every few weeks, but it needs to do it. Probably not not any less than every few weeks. And I'm sure if you've ever been in a relationship like this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have. Um, my previous relationship was like that. And that's just part of the functioning of, of the ego. The ego, if it doesn't have that situation, it's going to look for it. It's going to look for someone to fight with, to feed this negative energy, to get some drama. The ego loves drama, needs drama. And in this world, the way it is now, I don't think the ego is getting much drama, right? I could be wrong, but you know, I think that we're kind of stuck with our families and or we're stuck alone in a room. And there's not a whole lot of ups and downs to deal with and no drama. And so the ego is probably starting to just fade away. And if it hasn't happened yet, just give it more time because the world has changed. So how did this happen? Was it some kind of conspiracy? Um, I don't think so. I actually think that the ego did this to itself. And I say the ego, and that can be an ego within a person. The ego exists in institutions, uh, the way institutions think, governments and businesses and everybody. Um, The ego is just a way of thinking that can be collective or individual. But it's always the same. It always thinks the same way. And the interesting thing about this situation, I think, is that the ego created it. Illness And I've said this before, and I know this point is probably the most um, controversial, but illness is of the ego. It comes from the fear of the ego. Because without that kind of fear and that kind of panic in your body, your body would be functioning healthy, you know, properly, and you'd have an immune system and you'd fight the disease. Or you would heal if you get it. So because of -of out-of-control ego, this kind of illness is possible. And... And then what happens is we have even more fear in response to the illness. And because of this fear, the past is being threatened and, and tossed away. The future that the ego wanted, it becomes impossible. So it's a situation where the entire thought system collapses from within. I don't think anyone did this intentionally. I think the ego just got to a point where it collapsed from within. And what are we left with? You know, it's fascinating. So what are we left with? What, do we, what does it look like to move forward? I mean, what does a post-ego economy look like? It's not about making things that's going to satisfy the ego. It's about making things that are essential, essential to life, to enjoying life, to feeling good, to being healthy, 
to feeling secure and safe in a real way, to being humble. And it's about doing so in ways that we don't have to rely upon um, institutions or minimizing our reliance upon institutions because they're crazy right now and they will be for some time or always, they always have been. So it's more of a decentralized way of maybe working with people that you know and forming relationships to get things done, forming decentralized networks of, 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 you know, for getting work done and teams. And that's, and that's very doable today. I've been doing that already for eight years in my business, working with, te- with people around the world from home, each doing their, their part, you know, just um, loosely affiliated together under the same mission. So people who are waiting for things to get better in the future or go back to how they were, you're going to be waiting for a long time because the only, t- only time that the future ever comes or a different future or what appears to be a different future comes is when the present moment changes. And for that to happen, you have to start to do something within the actual space where everything exists, the now. You have to begin to do something differently. And so it's not about waiting. And that's the good news. You don't have to wait because any idea or any business or anything you want to do that doesn't fit the current situation isn't a good idea anymore because this is the current situation. This is not going anywhere. I mean, okay, you might, you might argue there could be some kind of vaccination um, that quickly gets rolled out in the next few months. Well, that, you know, that might happen. It probably isn't very likely to happen. If it does, um, you know, the ego has still been damaged. And I think that the real threat is going to be that something else will come along next year, the year after that. So it's kind of inevitable, inevitable. If you want to build a life for yourself, it has to be done in a way that is not so vulnerable to, to, a, to, a, to someone catching a flu, right? So we know that our freedom is gone. We know that we don't have any guarantees of freedom from our governments anymore. We know that our jobs are totally, you know, unstable, if someone in China catches a flu. So I don't think that, I think it's extremely foolish to think it'll go back to how it was because we can't believe in these systems anymore. We just went through this. We are going through this. And even if it does go, you know, the only way, the only way back, is there a way back? I guess if the governments somehow said we were wrong about something, that in fact, this is just a pretty bad flu season where a lot of people got pneumonia more than usual, a bit more than usual. I don't know. But do you think governments are going to admit they've been, they've, that they put the, us through this for, you know, for no good reason? No, they're not. So, you know, I just don't expect any way forward aside from those of us who are willing to, to shed ego, to lay it aside, and then to go on with our lives in the present moment, actually enjoying the present moment, not being... Um, not suffering because of all these wild and crazy out of control thoughts about past and future, about uh, competitiveness, about who's guilty, about, about, you know, who's a toxic person and, and, and shaming and blaming and, and attacking and trying to manipulate the world. And this exhausting, crazy behavior that led to this whole situation. And believe me, ego is a thing. <laughs> Do some reading on it. I've, I've, in other podcasts, I've talked about, you know, books you can read, but you have to understand what ego is because we have to escape it. If we don't escape it, we're just going to be stuck waiting. And that's not a good place to be in. Waiting and suffering and, and even more tortured thoughts and less enjoyment to the present moment. So to move forward in the post-ego era is to lay ego aside. And that is what is known as spiritual awakening. I don't think there is really a way to do it without a spiritual awakening. And, and maybe you don't see the connection, but, you know, there are a lot of people out there who have been trying to kind of do these hacks, you know, like Tim Ferriss and I don't know, there are all these life coaches and, and gurus out there who, who are somehow saying, you know, here's how to think about your fear. Here's how to tame it and all this. I don't think it's possible to shed fear unless you shed the ego, because that's the thought system that creates fear. You have to release the whole thought system. And the only, the only other thought system is the true one. The ego is the false one, but there's the true one. And that's a thought system of, well, you can call it perfect love. You can call it present moment awareness. Um, you can call it living in total truth and honesty. 
But it is awakening to consciousness. It's awakening to everything that is real in this eternal present moment. And you don't have to agree to anyone's definition of what God is, but there does have to be a willingness to destroy the ego. You have to be embracing the idea of some kind of God. And that could be just something as simple as the, the Tao, like the Tao Te Ching. It's God is this creative force, the nothingness, the void from which everything comes and to which everything returns, which is obviously true to any rational person. We came from nothing, returned to nothing. And so there's this creative force that balances the universe that, you know, cr that created the Big Bang, that was there before the Big Bang and is there eternally in the, in the blackness. That could be your version of God. It could be the Christian version of God. It could be the Course in Miracles version of God. It could be the Bhagavad Gita's version of God. It could be the Buddhist version of what, you know, the spiritual beliefs. But there has to be a humbling of yourself, not to an institution, not to a church, but to the idea that you are not God. And by saying that, realizing that actually you are. <laughs> actually, you are part of the oneness of God. You know, Christians say the Holy Spirit flows from within us. And that means that we all have the divine within us. And that's part of awakening. So it's not, you know, it's humbling your ego, but it's, it's also destroying your littleness and your pettiness. It's, 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 it's coming to recognize your true greatness, which is not of you. So spiritual awakening, salvation, awakening to consciousness is, is the only way to destroy the ego because the ego is the opposite of that. And we're talking about a truth. Now, the ego, the, the mind does have a function, you know, to have rational, logical thoughts and, and that will continue. But you will never heal and prepare for this new era until you recognize the higher truth as the ultimate reality. And these thoughts can kind of continue. You can observe this, uh, some of these thoughts will still continue. You still wake up one day and have a little bit of fear about something, but then you see it, you work on it, you meditate, you let it go. Sometimes you might have a petty thought about someone, but then you see that you did, you did that. You look past that. You forgive. Forgiveness is, is the same thing as perfect love. And forgiveness at all times, everyone, that's releasing the ego. To know that you're invulnerable. And not to cover too many topics, but here we are going into Easter right now. It's Good Friday. And if you don't think that there's some interesting message that Jesus sent us for the story, you know, uh, with, with the story of, of the redemption, um, to, to face death, to face being hung on the cross and persecuted, to face it with courage, with love in your heart, to claim that forgive them, they know not what they do. And then, of course, the message of the resurrection, the living eternally from beyond death. And it is not a message of fear. It is a message of overcoming fear. And the only way forward this Easter or the day after or ever is going to have to be that we have to overcome fear. And that doesn't mean storming the temple. It doesn't mean doing anything crazy. It just means letting go of the fear within. I'm not talking about doing anything in particular. I'm talking about the inner state of being. If there is still fear in you, the ego is still in you. When you release the fear by establishing a true spiritual practice, you can start by reading my free ebooks. You can start by reading Course in Miracles by Power of Now. You can start by reading Deepak Chopra for, you know, or, or Wayne Dyer or a lot of other people. Um, but I don't think you're going to get this kind of true spiritual awakening from within the structures of an organized religion. Why? Because religion is an egoic institution claiming that we know the answer, that do things our way, identify with us, and that salvation, well, that's the, that's the whole problem. And it's really interesting that churches have been shut down through this time as well. Everything the ego does, built up, needs, is being just torn down. 
from within the th same thought system that created it. And I do see this as a fundamental transition into a very different new era. And I, I just can't wait. I can't believe it's happening in my lifetime. It's the most wonderful thing. Never thought it would happen. And here it is. And life is abundant. Life is beautiful. And the abundance is going to come from, from within. To get ourselves right from within. And then be able to extend that love. Extend that inspiration. Extend that light that we are. By creating by making business systems, decentralized systems, by serving people products and services that are essential. By doing so in a way that we're not sacrificing our days, that we're enjoying ourselves as we do. This is entirely possible if we just do it. And it can be done now. And that's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I am doing day after day. And I would love to know anybody else out there. You know, I'm open to, to even meeting people and doing business ventures together. Uh, I do a lot of, you know, I do the, the, the sort of the sales prospecting and marketing piece. And if it's the right idea, I'll join with you and I'll give my, I'll, I'll give of myself and, to make your idea work right to me. You know, this is how we have to think. As usual, I will leave you with one of my songs. And this song actually has been winning a lot of awards um, lately. Um, a French film called Funeral um, from 2019. It's a short film. And they've won dozens and dozens of awards at film festivals around the world. And um, I don't know if you can watch the movie, watch the short film online anywhere, um, but it's an excellent. I, I love it. Um, and this song is actually kind of the foundation of of the film it's right at the end it comes up and it's kind of you know setting the setting the mood nicely and I'm, i just love that something i created so, so long ago um is being is being um appreciated or, or or being listened to now and and that's why one of the reasons why i keep going just you know keep doing what you do and the time will come and anything of value will survive and and this is just one of the uh, just endless millions and millions, endless, you know, eternal reasons that we can just totally rest in the truth of what we are, who we are, and the reality that is. Thank you for joining me once again in the Scondo podcast.
The sun is lighting up those dreams The world still sleeps so I'm still free So I keep very quiet And if I should fade off to sleep The day will start with or without me Hope you'll stay by my side.